wouldn't golf be easy if you didn't make any mistakes? In this video, I'm gonna go through five common mistakes that golfers make and how you can fix them to play better golf. Let's get stuck into the first one. So this first mistake comes from spending a little bit of time at the British Masters the other day and walking around one of the pros, Laurie Cantor, and seeing him and his caddy and what they did when they were going round in the prime round. They had a plan for every single shot they do. And that is one big mistake that golfers make. We're here on the fourth at Warrington Golf Club. And what I see time and time again from lots of players is a mistake is where they just walk up and just get the driver out and whack it. Now this hole here itself has got water just off the tee, it's got a bunker down the left hand side at about 240 yards and then it's also got some water and out of bounds down the right that's coming in at about 200 yards which is probably the common golfer's distance for their driver and also being on the right we're probably going to be a bit of a slicer. So a lot of people would walk on, grab their driver, whack it and then it just ends up going out of bounds. What a good golfer does is have a bit of a plan. Now you don't have to be the best golfer in the world to have a plan. All you have to do is be able to have a look out here. You might have some form of GPS, you might have a range finder, you might have a course guide but if you can just walk onto the tee and instead of just instinctively reaching for that driver on the par fours and the par fives or just hitting the same club that you always hit on the par threes, actually just have a look and think right well where's the wind today? What's out there? Is there any trouble? How am I actually feeling? Am I hitting it better? Am I hitting it further today? Am I hitting it worse so it's not quite going as far? Have a little bit of a plan. It takes you 30 seconds literally just to have a look down the hole and think to yourself what's out there? What have I got to avoid? And where's a good place that I could try and put this ball on the fairway? Because if you do that, even if you don't quite hit the shot that you desire, you're probably going to leave yourself in a better spot because you just didn't whack it and think oh, why has that gone in the water? Well, that was your driver distance, so don't do it. Have a plan, try and get the ball a little bit more in play by just having a plan. So I'm gonna hit my three iron instead of my driver because that's gonna pull me just short of that trap on the left and take the water out of play as well. And there we go, safely down the left-hand side, coming up short of the bunker and there, not made a mistake just by not whacking my driver down here because it was a par four. Let's go and have a look at another golfing mistake. Good shot. What did you hit then? Pitching wedge. Pitching wedge. Oh, I've got nine iron out. Comparing yourself to other golfers, we see there that Steve's just hit a pitching wedge, but I've got nine iron out. Now, what I would see in some instances from players when I see them playing, all of a sudden, they start comparing themselves to their golfer that they're playing with. Maybe they don't drive the golf ball as long as them. Maybe they don't hit their irons as long as them, but they try to keep up with that player that they're playing, or they try to hit shots that that other player's hit, when really, you're not confident of that, you may be not as long, it's not your forte. So one of the big mistakes I want you to try and avoid is that when you get out on the golf course, don't start comparing yourself to other golfers in your four ball and your three ball, your one playing partner that you're playing with. Play your own individual game. Understand your strengths, understand how far you hit it, what type of shot shape you've got, so then you're not trying to mimic what your good friend might be doing and hitting better shots than you. Just play your own game and then all of a sudden you'll be able to actually get around the golf course a little bit easier because you're playing to your strength. So I've got my nine iron now here instead of thinking I need to muscle a pitching wedge because I like to get a little soft one here. So I've picked the correct one. And nicely away and there by not choosing what my friend has chosen, I'm able to play to my strengths and hit better golf shots. So know your own game and stick to your own game when you're out on the golf course. Let's go and take a look at another mistake. The next mistake that I see golfers making is valuing the wrong thing. And what I mean by that is that sometimes we don't put as much practice in on the area where we need to the most. And that's probably in and around the green. As a mid handicapper to a higher handicapper, you're probably not hitting that many greens yet. So a lot of your shots are gonna be in and around the greens with your wedges and with your putter. But what I see loads of people doing, and when I'm teaching, the first club that comes out of the bag is always the driver. I wanna hit this better, I wanna hit it longer, I wanna hit it straighter. That's all well and good, 
But if you get great around the greens, just spend a little bit more time on the pitching green, on the putting green, working on your short game, even if you do hit a few slices, you'll actually be able to save a few shots anyway in and around the greens. So when you're next thinking about practicing or booking a lesson, maybe think about your short game or think about your game as a total, which area is your weakest and actually start to put some practice in that. Don't just go down to the driving range and start whacking loads of golf balls, trying to hit it as hard as you can, as long as you can. Think about how you could get better from inside 100 yards. Could you be better at the half shots, chips around the green, holding long putts, maybe a short putting, do that and you're gonna to start to drop shots as you get onto the golf course. The next big mistake that seeing golfers make comes down to this, your golf bag, and more importantly, the golf clubs that you have in it. Now for my set that I've got here, I've been fitted for these golf clubs. What a lot of golfers do, tend to go into the shop, they may have a problem, i.e. chipping or slicing with the driver and try and buy their way out of trouble. They think, right, I'll go and get this club and magically, just because I've got this club that says it's gonna be an anti-slice one, I'm never gonna slice the golf ball again. Unfortunately, that isn't the case you might end up still slicing it. It might help you a little bit, but the clubs aren't the answer. We've got to invest a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and maybe a little bit of money into actually improving ourselves. But also, if you are gonna go and spend hundreds on a set of golf clubs, make sure you're buying the right one. I had a chap turn up for a lesson the other day. He had three wedges in his bag, and they were all within six degrees. He had a 60, a 58, and a 56. Now the total distance between those was 12 yards from 60 to 56. So it was pointless. That 58 could probably do the job of all three wedges. So also don't go out there and just buy products willy nilly because you're probably actually making poor choices, not informed choices, and taking up a slot of those 14 clubs where you could actually maybe invest it in a hybrid golf club that could get you on the, go on the uh, fairway a little bit easier. You might need different wedges. You might need a higher bounce wedge. You might need different flex in your shafts. But all I'm saying here is make sure that the clubs that you're using are right for you. Don't just go and buy them because you think they're the latest, greatest thing and they're gonna change your golf game. You've gotta put the effort in and you've also gotta make smart decisions when you are buying. Let's go and take a look at probably the biggest mistake I think that amateurs are making out on the golf course. The biggest mistake that I see amateurs making out on the golf course is under clubbing. It happens so frequently when we're out here hitting into greens. You've hit a great drive down the fairway, but all of a sudden you leave it short and you think, oh, that was a good strike, what happened? Well, what we tend to do is think that we hit our clubs a little bit further than we actually do, but also we don't pay consideration to the elements around us. Now here, we've got 150 to the middle. If I actually zap the flag, it's actually 160 up to the back of the flag there. So if I were to just look at the 150 post and you didn't have the front and back yardages like the plates do here at Warrington, you might think, well, 150, hit an okay shot, it only goes 140. Now I've got a 20 yard putt and that's gonna be pretty hard to get pretty close on my first putt. So A, getting a little bit of information, but secondly, if I were to just throw a little bit of grass up here, we can see that the wind's coming down into the right. So as I hit this golf ball out, the wind's gonna be hitting that golf ball back towards me. So that's gonna take some speed off it, which is gonna take some distance off it. Also, the lie might play a big part of it. You might be in a little bit of rough. It might be sat pretty nicely. It might be popped up so it climbs a little bit more. What we've gotta then do is think about the temperature today. We're out here at seven o'clock in the morning. It's cold. Come noon, it might be about four or five degrees warmer, so the ball's actually gonna travel a little bit further. So these are just little things that I've taken into consideration to help me make a better choice when I go to my irons. From here, normally, I would hit an eight iron, but now that I know that wind's coming in and it's hurting, I know that the wind is cold, I'm actually gonna go into my seven and hit one of these and try and keep it a little bit lower to make sure that I get all the way back to that flag. So when you're out on the golf course, don't just reach for a club as soon as you get to the golf ball. Try and actually gain a little bit of information about the conditions. From there then, you should actually be able to start getting your yardages correct. And I would say one last little bit on this is try and play beyond the flag. Add five yards 
to whatever distance you get that flag at. If you can do that, then you give yourself room to miss hit it and actually still come up pretty close to the flag. And there, kept it lower, a beautiful strike. And even that has only just managed to get up towards the flag. It's probably about 20 foot short of the flag and I hit that pretty good. So even there, I could have gone two clubs more from what I would actually normally hit from that 160 distance. So make sure you're not making that most common mistake of under clubbing when you're out on the golf course. Guys, five simple things you can do to get your golf better there. Make sure you go through that list, check them off. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in another video very soon.